All right, so just like the last video on the 12 point, this is a throwback to 2021 deer season. This was a deer season that I found a big deer on a piece with permission. I just wanna show that some of these the same strategies we do on these private farms, with a little bit of work and finesse and, and, and negotiating, you can kind of get, you can kind of implement some of the same powerful strategies. A late muzzleloader season, 2020, I got permission on a piece, went up there, climbed up in a tree and watched a ton of deer going back and forth and I actually saw a pretty big mature deer, but I couldn't tell what he was. He just walked with his head down. Started bow hunting the next week and got a little closer to him. I left for Christmas. I, I put some cameras out, came back from Christmas. I pulled my cameras, boom, there's a picture of the deer. Really nice mature deer. A couple pictures later, Christmas day, drops his antlers. So that game came to an end very quickly in 2020 deer season. Fast forward to this year, I came up here mid-September, wait for some signs of some scrapes, so I had a little better um, odds of getting them on camera. I was coming around the corner back there, hadn't found a scrape yet, and I hear something, I look over and boom, he freaking stands up in this little point, right, I mean, literally right where I left him last year. I could tell it was probably him, I mean, he had a huge body, huge frame, but it was that classic, like, gets up and he's wheeling to the side and I, I just see his frame from the back and takes off. So I go around to the point, boom, scrape right there. I'm like, oh boy. So I put a Ridge Tech cell camera there, take off around the corner, find another scrape, put up a browning. Two days later, boom, monster. Just has the vibe, a lot of mass. It's got like a rolled over G4 on the left side. We're gonna go in there, hang the blind, and then we're gonna, we got permission to mow some corn, buy it back. Uh, so we're implementing like a lot of the strategies we do on our own farms that we develop, um, but we're, we're going to implement them kind of uh, in real time right before the season. And mowing corn is legal in uh, the state of Illinois. A lot of people are confused on that. It's literally one of the most deadly tactics, especially in October. And then I've got some, some brassicas with me that we're going to overseed. Here recently, last week, is where I jumped him out of that little point. We're gonna utilize this pinch. It's a 100 yard gap, so it's not ideal. Uh, but we're gonna put the blind here in, in kind of the pinch. Hopefully the thermals will pull into that draw right there. If he's bedding anywhere on this south facing slope, our wind should be okay, especially with the box, but he's gonna feel comfortable walking into the wind into this spot. I want my box right here. I start out by putting a line, a 40 yard line, so I can see what 40 yards is. And I know I want to start off by mowing a quarter acre. And then I kind of shaped it to where it comes into a 30 yard gap instead of the full 40. With mowing corn, some of it I like to shred real low. And then I like to raise up and just kind of bust the cobs off and what that does is it makes them work at some of it. If you shred it all too good, they tend to eat it a lot quicker. So we got our corn mode. We're gonna get up here and, and see what we got, see what it looks like. Best part about this blind location is that the sun is gonna be setting right here behind us. So it is going to be casting shadows and we're in the shadows of the trees anyway. And we are going to be dark in this blind. We left a little bit more corn and I thought I'd need to against the blind as our screen. Some of them are kind of cutting our angle for our shots, the tips of them. So we're gonna mow one more swath. You do all this and you don't leave this screen, this is gonna be a, you're gonna start blowing this field up. Every time you hunt it, you're gonna blow deer everywhere and uh, it's gonna get less and less powerful. With the screen, this is a game changer. We should be able to get in and out of this blind and hunt every single high pressure front of October and not hurt anything. That's good. I've gotten, I figured there'd be more pictures of him here because of the scrape line, but I've gotten more cell pictures where I jumped him where he was last year, which is only 150 yards away. I've got more pictures of him, which basically tells me that we're in the right spot and our chances are even higher where we, where we set it up. Unreal, he's not small.
everything that I ever thought I knew about deer tells me that this deer could show up in this. We've got the perfect setup. He's going to be in this cornfield. We can't wait until we get a daylight picture or something. We gotta, we gotta be ahead of his moves. And there's going to be an evening, and I think it's gonna be a high pressure evening, that he comes into this plot. stuck to our, our plan that we told you day one, which you know, which is what we do every year in October. We located this deer. We've committed to this deer. Here it is, third week October. We have not been messing around doing anything else. We're sticking to this and sooner or later, odds and probability are gonna catch up with him. We have not affected him. He is still here. He's coming in here at night. That's what he that's what a big deer does. So we're just waiting on a powerful day like today. I think last night was more powerful of a night, but the problem was, um, I think that the powerful part of the front happened like literally like minutes too late. You know, we talk about that X and the clouds go out and the pressure rises. Well, you know, when we, last I remember when it was still light enough, there were clouds, and a lot of clouds. I mean, we were filming it and talking about how pretty it was and everything. There was a lot of clouds. We stayed in the blind for like half hour after he left. And when we walked out, I stopped at one point. It was like, dude, look at the sky. And it was just gin clear, gin clear. And it was, there was no more wind and it was brisk. And it was, I just think that the front was a hair too late and and we saw that because we didn't hardly see any deer i you know last night was pretty awesome we didn't see hardly any deer until the last minute deer read the script. 
we had an east wind tonight and he came right out the road. I had the window open. He was kind of, he was kind of getting like he was gonna get broadside, you know, and I drew back. I waited him out. He didn't get broadside quick enough and I was starting to feel too shaky. I let down. He still didn't get broadside, didn't get broadside. And then this doe I see out of the corner of my eye comes scooting across the plot like she winded us, which I figured she did, you know, being to the, to the down, you know, more west of us. And, and then all of a sudden, I just see him rear up, you know, like he got hit in the face with a, with a human, the smell of human. And he just, as soon as he reared back, he freaking blew and, Gone. Gone. It's all over. So when early November rolled around, our plan was to ditch the box and get into an inside corner funnel that was kind of between doe bedding areas and right there in his core. Knew he'd be coming through this funnel. November 6th was the best day I've ever had deer hunting. Um, I saw him at one o'clock in the afternoon down the bottom behind me and he kind of started coming up the hill and he disappeared and I figured he, he bedded down back there. Um, and next couple hours was quiet uh my cell phone one of my cameras went off and i had a picture of the big 10 pointer over on the other side of the field and again this is a permission piece so don't have like a ton of history i kind of thought the deer was five i was kind of kind of make a judgment call when i saw him if uh i was going to shoot him or not so he shows up over there on a camera and then a few minutes later another camera he was like he was circling the field scent checking it and all of a sudden I hear something break behind me and something happened and the deer were just on fire. And I look and here comes a big deer off of that bedding, bedding hill behind me, pops right up. He's walking at me and he turns, he's walking towards the field and he's about to get in my wind. I turned and I, I, got, I got on him and I, was, I had that range finding bow sight and I was trying to range him and it, and it kept saying 17 yards, 17 yards. And then all of a sudden it said 40 and I had one eye closed, you know, no depth perception. And, my shot arrow went about a foot over its back and opened my eye, it was like 30 yards. So next thing you know, here comes a deer that looks just like the the 10 point, just 20 inches smaller. And he come running right under me. And then a few minutes later, I look up, here comes a big 10 on the same path. But this time he cut and went around the corn and I grunted once, he turned his head, I grunted again, he just sprinted in there. As soon as I saw him, I knew I, knew I was gonna shoot him. Um, so he came in there about 15, 16 yards and it just, everything happened so fast. What we do, it's, it's more about strategy. So we wanted to share this with you. The big takeaways here are, it doesn't matter how much private ground you have or whatever, run cameras on as much ground as you have access to because you never know where a big one's gonna be. That'd be the first takeaway. The second takeaway is when you can do certain things to manipulate and make him come where you wanna do and make your access perfect, it just in increases your odds, especially with a big mature deer like that. When this deer winded me and wheeled and took off, you know, I was like, oh man, all this, and it comes down to that, you know. But he was right back in the field in daylight in a scrape. So like, you know, don't get too bummed out if you bump a big mature deer like that, because if you bumped him, that means he was there in daylight. And if he was there in daylight, it means it's somewhere he's really comfortable. One of the biggest takeaways with this deer is, you know, everybody talks about pressure and this and that. Like, you know, it's important to have a really good strategy not pressure your farm over the years because you have to you have to make it a place that a deer wants to a big buck wants to live because there's no pressure so it's really important not to pressure the farm but when you get when you just go in and find a big deer on a farm like this that obviously didn't have much pressure and you have a six or seven year old deer that's living in this small area you know 15 acres 20 acres there were several things that happened uh, you know that I, you know, I, I bumped him, I pressured him, but he'd come right back. And the takeaway is when a deer gets that age and something works for that long in his life, he knows all his escape routes, it can be harder than you would think to actually push him out of there for good, especially, you know, that time of year.